Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be my review of the Cursa Ninja Speedpad, and I think a lot of things in this review might come off as maybe hypercritical or passionate. I think that's just kind of more so uh, a disagreement that I have with a lot of other opinions that I've seen in the space so far already. Um, but one thing I would say is that the Cursa Ninja Speedpad is a great pad. The people from Cursa are great guys, and they have a lot of passion behind this project and behind the company. They only had 500 units on this first batch, and presumably, I would think that uh, almost all 500 are probably already sold, uh, but I do want to get out my thoughts and opinions on the Carissa Ninja. This is a low initial friction, low dynamic friction, low static friction pad, one that is, in my opinion, not the same as a Hayate Atsu, and not the same as a Artisan Raiden, particularly not a Artisan Raiden Xsoft, and I also don't put this in the same bracket as the Lamzu Energon, certainly not the Lamzu Energon Pro. This is a Alpha Cell based pad, and I think it's best to kind of compare the pad to other pads with rubber bases or Alpha Cell because it is a pretty dense pad. It's firm. It's not something that is easy to dig into. You can dig in a little bit, um, but it does not really add any additional control because it is, again, it's a firm pad. Uh, and with that base, it really does come off as a very consistent and very fast pad with the fabric that they've chosen. Uh, the fabric does have a little bit of shimmer to it that I don't know if that comes off uh, on the video or not. Um, and that little bit of shimmer on the pad, you actually do if you kind of get your fingerprints on the pad, sometimes you will see a little bit of remnants of that. So I don't necessarily know that the pad is fully humidity, oil, or moisture proof. Uh, but in terms of my experience, nothing affected it. And I live in a very humid climate. The pad remained consistent. The pad remained fast, no matter what I tried. Um, and there are some skate variations that I kind of had a preferable playing experience on it. I think, personally speaking, if I was to play on this pad, I would probably use the core pad control skates or the uh, Pulsar V2 glass skates, because the V2 glass skates actually do have, believe it or not, a lot of stopping power and more stopping power on this pad than a lot of the PTFE variants that I've personally tried. Just grabbing my G Pro Superlight, I can tell you that uh, me personally, I think that I get a little bit more control in stopping power just because that new V2 glass gate does have some really nice stoppage ability. In terms of the Tiger Ice dots that I have on my G303, um, it is a very nice experience. It's a very fast pad, again, one that remained very consistent. Um, but one of the issues, which is probably the only familiarity and similarity that I will kind of relay compared to a Raiden Mid and compared to a Hayate Atsu, is that when you are trying to fast track people, there is a lot of ability to get a little bit too wiggly and a little bit too over aimy in fast tracking movements. If you're, going, if you're trying to target swap from a target on the left and go to the right, um, because of that friction equivalent, um, it is a pad that is a bit easy to either wiggle or over aim. And for me, that did affect my gameplay in Apex when trying to track somebody who's moving very quickly or even somebody who's long range. Even again, this is a problem I had on the raid in mid and the Hate Atsu. Um, but if somebody's long range, it just takes a little bit too much effort to keep that crosshair tight on a very far away target that is moving in Apex. For tack shooters, if you're somebody who likes very speedy pads, certainly this could work for you. Um, I think that a lot of people for tack shooters kind of prefer that additional balance or control. So if you're somebody who needs that, um, again, it's a very fast pad. So realize that when you are making a purchasing decision. In terms of what I would compare the pad to in terms of a glide feel and friction feel is the Asus Aim Labs pad. I think this is a pad that has that low initial, low static, low dynamic, which is very similar to the Kurosun Ninja. The Kurosun is a little bit more of a smooth and buttery surface compared to the Aim Lab pad, but it is a fast experience like this pad. The stitching, I would say, is uh, about as equivalent on both pads. The Asus pad has a rubber base, again, versus the Alpha Cell base. Uh, both pads, the stitching is over the surface. The surface is not over the stitching. Um, so an experience that is very similar in glide feel to the Asus Aim Labs. 
Uh, but I would probably say that the durability is probably better on the Curson because the Asus pad is, I believe, coated. In terms of the overall experience that I had, again, for me, I get a little bit too wiggly. I get a little bit too over Amy in the fast tracking games, which I unfortunately still main because we're in an FPS drought or just a gaming drought in general. Um, but again, overall, if you are looking for that fast, speedy, fun experience, the Curson is going to bring it. It's going to bring it hard. Um, again, a very consistent feeling pad, one that in my very hot and humid climate was not affected in terms of the overall speed. So I think if you're looking for that type of experience, it's a great pad. Again, not one that I would main because of that reason. I don't main a Hayat Daihatsu and I don't rain, main a Raiden mid, uh, but overall the Kurosan Ninja Speed, you're getting exactly what is advertised. It is a very speedy pad. One that is, I think, uh, quite good. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope it helped. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next review. Peace.